So today, here's what I want to do. I want to go part three of living inside out. This is part three, living inside out. I started thinking about, you no, know, when I think, Daniel's like, oh, Lord. So, you know, I started thinking about what would it look like? Now, think about this. What would your life look like if you started living from the inside out? Not the outside. Not, not, not storms of this life dictate you. Not what the doctor says or announces over you. Not what people write about you on Facebook. I'm talking about what would your life look like if you lived from the inside out? What would Elkhorn Baptist Church look like if we was a church that worshiped from the inside out? What would your marriage look like if your marriage was from the inside out? out. Man, listen, God's doing something, and I am so excited to give you this word. So what would your life look like if you live from the inside out? The first thing God gave me, and I'm so toe up. Everybody say toe up. I know I said toe, but that's where I'm Kentucky, you know, toe up. I am toe up this morning about preaching this word. The first thing that God gave me to give you about living an inside out life. First of all, I got to ask you this before I even preach this. How many of y'all want to live an inside-out life? Come on, if your hand's not up, you're in trouble with this church. An inside-out life. In other words, greater is he that is in me than he is in the outside living in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? And I'm going to preach this and quote this until you get this. But the first thing God told me, if we're going to live an inside-out life, the number one thing that's going to happen to me and to you is the first thing is the tag. The tag is going to be exposed. The tag is going to be exposed. It's going to get exposed. If you live an inside-out life, your tag is going to be exposed. Y'all know what tag stands for? Talents and gifts. Talents and gifts. Listen to this. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 18. 25, 18, Matthew. One man who received a talent. Everybody say a talent. God gave a talent, right? One man received a talent that God gave him. Watch the process of this dude. He went away. He dug a hole in the ground. And he buried it. God says, I have given Elkhorn whatever she needs to not just survive, but thrive. God has given Elkhorn whatever she needs to go above and beyond. But here's one, one thing. We've got way too many churches, way too many Christians that are taking the gift, the talent and the gift, the tag that God has given you, and you're not accepting the gifts and the talents because you're, you're wrestling to get some things, some torment and some guilt. Instead of the talents and the gifts, the torments and the guilt. You, you've got it backwards. It's not the torment and the guilt. It's the talent and the gifts. And God is trying to do something in your life. Instead of you accepting the gift, Terrence is so powerful. What we're doing, we're taking the talent, we're taking the gift, we're leaving God's presence, we're digging a hole, and we're putting the gift and the talent in the ground, and we're covering it slick up. Prophecies in this room. Tongues is in this room. I ain't backing off the Bible. Yeah, listen, if you've got a problem with tongues, you've not read 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14. You've not read Ephesians chapter 6. You've not read the Bible. It's New Testament. There's all kinds of gifts in this church. There's van drivers. There's, there's Sunday school teachers. There's all kinds of gifts and talents in this church. You know the problem, Brother Robbie? Well, here's what the churches have done. We have accepted the gift but we have turned from God, we have dug a hole, and we put the gift and the talent in the ground and put dirt over what God has given us. Shame on the church. It's going to get right, but it's tight. Are y'all ready for a word? One of the worst things that a Christian can do, one of the worst things that a man of God, a woman of God can do is take the talent and take the gift, take the tag and bury it. It's one of the worst things. I remember back in 2010, I know a lot of you may not, but back in 2010, God gave me a word to speak at the Elkhorn Baptist Church. 
I titled the sermon, If Graveyards Could Preach. If Graveyards Could Preach. Brother Jason, I started thinking about that Friday in my, in my study. Man, if graveyards could preach. Could you imagine going to a graveyard and you could hear the voices that were six feet under the ground, the talent and the gifts that had been buried, what they would say to you today? I wish I would have wrote a book. I wish I would have answered my call. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I wish I'd have done this. I wish I'd have done that. I got a calling on my life. I've got a gift in my life. But all I have done, now I'm six feet under, and I've got dirt over the gift and the talent. If you could take a microphone and hold it over a graveyard, I wonder what she'd be screaming at the churches today. Build it. Dream it. You can do it. Don't you listen to that voice of the devil. Don't you ruin that. Don't you do that. I'm telling you, if graveyards could preach, I wonder what if a dead man could escape hell today, what the preacher would say behind the pulpit. You think I'm wild? You think Rafferty's radical? You let somebody from hell escape the pits of hell and stand behind a pulpit with a microphone in their hand, and I guarantee you, you'll see some fire and you'll hear some brimstone. You sure would. But I guarantee you the person in hell would say these words. I got scripture to back this up. Boy, I wish I could go back and witness to my family. Boy, I wish I could preach that word one more time. I wouldn't tickle their ears. I would tell them truth. I'd preach the Bible to them. Heaven and hell are real. And listen, everybody under my voice today, you're going to one place or the other. You say, Brian, that's just two. You've got little kids in the room. I'm going to take the children while they're young, when they're young as Nolan, and they're sitting there in their grandpa's lap, and they're looking at me right now while they've got my attention, and I'm going to preach the word, and hopefully they ain't got to grow to be an old man or an old woman and wait till they're six feet under to do something for God. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. If graveyards could preach. If your grannies and your papas could come back. If my Holy Ghost Spirit filled granny could get out of the grave, she'd probably take a whole bottle of oil and just pour it on my head. But see, when you live, listen, watch me. When you start living an inside out life, the tag, your talents and your gifts get exposed. I thought about this when I told Dana, I said, I think I want to wear my blue jeans inside out. And I think I want to wear my shirt inside out. Y'all know how hard it is to put on a shirt? And I think I said, I'm going to call Nancy and get that dummy, get that mannequin. You know what I'm saying? So listen to me. The tag gets exposed. Your destiny, your purpose, hallelujah, your calling, your anointing gets exposed. I got some schoolmates here today, Scott Horde and his beautiful family's here today, and I got Barry and Sue Ann. I tell you guys this all the time, and you can ask them. I was not most likely to be a pastor, voted most likely to be a pastor in school. No. You know what B. Ralph was doing? I was giving a book report, and next thing I know, a little black spot started going like this. And next thing I know, somebody was standing over and saying, Rafferty's dead. They thought I'd died up in class. You're looking at somebody up here on this stage. I am humble. I am amazed. I am set back that God can take somebody like me and a gift and a talent can start getting exposed in my life. And then I'm telling y'all in Jesus' name, there's all kinds of gifts. There's all kinds of talents. There's all kinds of people in here today that you just need to say, God, here I am. Use me. Use me. Use me, God, I'm telling you. Another thing I wrote down here, you can't buy your gift. You can't buy, you can't buy that. Only God can put the tag in the shirt. Only God can do that. Only God is the one that gives the gifts and the talents. No church, no man can give you what God can give you. Nobody can. But see, I'm telling you, next time, listen to me. Men, you're going to be amazed. I'm going to prophesy just a little bit. Next time your wives go to the store, to the department store, or the, the mall, they're going to look at the tag and they ain't going to worry about the size. They're going to say, honey, does this gift and talent fit you? 
Somebody just missed a five-second praise break right there. Y'all just slick missed it right there. I'm telling you. You ain't going to worry about, well, this large won't fit me no more. No. You're going to start looking at a shirt. What's inside the shirt is the most important. What you have on the inside of y'all, listen to me. Some of you have got a bad doctor's report. Some of you, somebody has spoken death over your life. But listen to me, greater is he that's in you. God be for you. There's no weapon formed against you that shall ever prosper. And every tongue that rises against you shall cease at the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, God is in here. You, you can't stop it. How many of y'all know you can't stop what's going on on the inside? Woo, I'm telling you, you can't stop what God is doing. People tell me all the time, say, Brian, you just need to settle down. I can't. Brian, you just need to be a good little preacher, wear a suit and a tie. And Brian, stand behind a big old pulpit where people can't see you. Brian, you move too much. You're like a ping pong ball. I, I can't. Because here's what I have found out, Brother Joey. My gift and my talent, I believe that I have accepted, is preaching the Word of God with truth. Leading people from hell into heaven. That's my assignment here on earth. And if I got to get red faced, if our ears have to be pegged back like a horse, hallelujah, I'll do whatever it takes to save somebody from going to the pits of hell. Whatever it takes. I told the first service, and I'm going to tell you this too. Lots of people say, well, I don't like this church service, and I don't like this song, I don't like this, it's too loud. Watch this, I'm telling you, no matter where you go, no matter where you go, no matter where you go, you, if you don't deal with you, all you're going to do is pack your bad self from one church to another church to another church to another church. And as long as you've got people, you're going to have problems. So you know what I'm going to tell you? Deal with it. Why would you be mad that people are being saved at Elkhorn Baptist Church? That's why I tell people all the time, I don't like the song. I don't care. Somebody got saved on that song. Next Sunday, watch this. You ready? You ready? Y'all, it's y'all's time to say yes, I'm ready. Thank y'all. All right, man. First service rocked it out. Y'all got, don't let first service beat y'all. Yeah, hell right. Here's what I know. Eight people are going to be getting baptized next week. That's what it's about. Because watch this. When the tag gets exposed, it will draw people. It will draw people. Number two, watch this. Not only does if the, the tag show, but also I like this too. I like this. The tag shows who created the shirt. Their name is on the shirt. Come on. Their name is on that. Watch this. You are not who you think you are. The tag is on the inside. The real you lives on the inside of you. Some of you, how many of y'all have ever said this? I can't believe I've done that. It's not you. It's not you. See, you know what my hardest job is as a pastor? Change y'all's thinking mindsets. Change the religious mindset. Change the stinking mindset. I've heard this before. Well, they made the bed. Let them sleep in it. You don't want to sleep in that bed either. We don't want what we truly deserve. But thank God we got a Jesus Christ that stepped out of the throne room of heaven and stepped on the cross and left, lifted us up and saved our soul. And now he redeemed us and we're on our way to heaven. That right there is a gift. That's a gift. But the tag, the owner, the guild owns this right here. Says it does. Watch this, y'all ready? Not really. Because God owns guild. And I had a professor one time wanting to argue with me about science and Theology, science and theology, science and theology. I said, Doc, I, I believe in science. I just believe that God created it. That like, whoop. I just, but I don't fight that stuff. I ain't got time to fight. Because here's what I know. If you'll let God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit who's on the inside, if you'll let him start coming through your life, it's amazing in the spiritual realm what will start happening. It's amazing what will start happening. That's why I love the creator of the shirt. Have you ever heard someone say, man, God is really using that person? How many of you have ever heard that? Man, God is all over that person. And it's easy to see who, who, who the tag belongs to when it's being exposed. See, that's God. That's God. About the praise band. Man, listen, I, I can't even play the radio 
I'm one of them joyful noise Christians. How many can testify? Listen, I'm glad y'all are joyful noise. Just realize your talent's out there. You see? But them up here, it amazes me that their tag is showing. Listen, let them, let them do their thing. Let, let the tag, the gift and the talent, let it roll. Here's what I always say. Here's the deal. If you can do better, come on up. You're the next contestant. It's so easy to, to sit back and judge. And I wrote this thing. I wrote this, had someone in the first service. God gave me this, Courtney. You're a note taker. Here's what, here's what someone wrote at, that I said in the first service. Everybody wants to wear the T-shirt, but, but they, they want to cut the tag out. We want to cut the tag. But we want to, we want to, wear, everybody wants to be a Christian. Nobody wants to die and go to hell. Everybody, you watch this, every, even the atheists who say they're atheists, they believe in Jesus. They talk about Jesus more than Christians do. They sure do. I got a, a friend over in Russell County named Steve. He says, I'm an atheist. Watch this. Steve talks about Jesus more than I do. I said, Steve, when are you going to come preach at El Corn? I don't believe in God. I don't, I'm like, yes, you do. It's funny, he got sick and got put in the hospital. He called me to pray for him. <laughs> and I just reminded him, Steve, I, I'm just saying, I just thought you didn't believe in Jesus. Well, if there is a God, I want you to pray. Come on now. But listen, when you start living inside out, the tag gets exposed. Your talents and your gifts come forward. The owner of the tag, here's what I love about God. It's not Greg. It's not the praise team. It's not b Ralph up here. It's not Jared or Bobby. It's the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside that's coming over on the outside. God gets all the glory. God gets all the glory. I just felt that. Let's take a praise break right there for five seconds. Let's just give God praise because he, come on, y'all. Come on. Let's give the owner of the tag a praise right now. Hallelujah. The owner of the tag. The owner of the tag. God owns us. Woo! Give your neighbor a high five and say, tag, you're it. Woo! Y'all watch out. That's a dangerous high five. Tag, you're it. You know what he just said? When he touched you, touching and agreeing. Two or three come together and watch this. Touching and agreeing. Touching and agreeing. Tag, your talents and your gifts. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. You know your worst enemy is you. Satan hadn't defeated you. Your mindset's defeating you. Your mindset is defeating you. What if I, told, what if I gave you a blank check and I said, you can have whatever you want. Go get it. What would y'all do? Some people just probably fill it out for probably a million dollars. Here's what I would do. I'm just telling you, I, I would go for it all. What if I told you God gave you a blank check? Y'all can have whatever you want to have. Now, I know I'm going against the Southern Baptist roots right now. I know I'm going totally against what church people think. But I'm telling you, God says there's nothing that can stop you. If God be for you, who can be against you? I'm telling you, there's a shifting and there's a shaking going on in this country, in this nation, like never before. And y'all better put your feet in the stirrups and hang on to the horse because the horse is going toward the flag. That's right. Here, I love you too, Brendan. Number three. Number three. I'm flying, aren't I? Number three. Here's what I love, and I'm going to wrap it up with this. Not only... Does, is the tag exposed, the talent and the gift, the tag, T-A-G, talents and gifts. And not only does the owner of the shirt brand it and in it and say, I'm the one that gave you the talents and the gifts. And if you let me expose you, your gift and talent will go forward. But number three, here's it is. Y'all hang on to me, okay? I asked the first sir, don't y'all get mad. I'm going to tell the sir, don't y'all get mad. But number three, you can see if the tag is 100%. You can see on this tag, if you lift it up, you can see if it's 100% real. You can see if it's 100% real. Most tags, I looked at this, I went through the closet, it was crazy. Most tags on shirts say this, 50% cotton and 50% polyester. 
<laughs> they sure do. You might get a little bit blessed and have one say 65 polyester and 35% cotton. And to be honest, don't y'all get mad at me, but to be honest, I know a lot of 50% polyester Christians. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of 50% soft cotton Christians. I'm not talking about Cotton Eye Joe. I know a lot of people, 50% sold out. What if I told you you've got as much of God as you want? I ain't stopping, church. I'm not going to stop until two things happen. Until I take my last breath here or I hear the, the horn up there. But either way, I'm not stopping. I believe in the Word of God. I don't want to be 50% sold out, 60% sold out, 75% sold out. I don't even want to be 90% sold out. I want God to have 100% of me. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of people say, well, I go to church 65% of the time. We'll see how that works on Judgment Day. Well, I participate 35% of the time in praise and worship. Well, Brian, I, I, I give my little 2% my tithe. Oh, God, he's talking about money. Listen, if you was a tither, you'd be shouting right now. Because you know what God says, if you give unto me, I'll give back unto thee. And I'll make your barns, I'm telling you, overflow. How many overflow Christians do we can testify? You give to God, he'll press it down, shake it together, and run it over in Jesus' name. He sure will. Yeah, 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 yeah. God's looking for the 100% tags. God's looking for the 100% Christian. 100% sold out. He ain't looking for 50% in church and 50% in the world. That's your straddle defense. I'm glad I'm in Elkhorn this morning. A lot of churches probably didn't dismiss me. You cannot have one foot in heaven and one foot in the world. You, you listen to me. Either you're born again, saved, and know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you're 100% lost. Watch this. <laughs> Thank God that Jesus Christ is not going to come back 95%. Thank God, and this will be a messed up thing right here, that 50% of the grave is going to burst open. Boy, that'd be something to just have an arm come out. <laughs> I'd be hanging on somebody's foot. You know what I'm saying? Take me with you. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. How many of y'all are thankful that we serve a God? I feel the Holy Spirit. That just didn't save you 50% of the time in the good times. But even in the bad times, the times that are ugly, the times that the doctor gives you a bad report, the times that you're going out of your mind, you got a God that will hang on when everybody else lets go. How many of y'all are thankful you got a 100% God? Hallelujah. A 100% God. Woo! Man, I feel that. Thank God he just didn't save me 40%. Thank God in the midst of my trouble, in the midst of a, of a horrible season in my life, when everybody else walks out, he'll step up and step in. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say this. Say, dear Lord, I receive my increase. All of it. All of it. I want all my increase. I'm not going to settle for 50%, 60%, 75 I want all of my increase. And I'm going to get it. With or without y'all. Rafferty's on a one-way track. And I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. And I ain't looking back. I heard Brother Haywood Reiner. Everybody knows Coach. Learned a lot from him in nine years. He was my associate pastor for nine years. Haywood has re retired. Him and Dixie are living it up. Bless their heart. And I pray blessings upon them too. They deserve, they deserve this moment. They deserve it. They sure do. They deserve it. I'm going to tell you some wisdom from Haywood Reiner. Some wisdom from Haywood Reiner. Brother Haywood Reiner told me, he said this. When I, he worked for Campbell's Universities, when I go out to recruit football players, watch this. When he goes out to recruit football players, he always looked for the players who gave 100%. 
He said, you don't want to have to beg a football player to play. He said, you don't want to have to beg a football player to come to practice. You don't, have to, you don't want to have to beg them to love the game. But he said these words that stuck in my spirit. But he says, you show me. I'm not looking for the best talent. I'm just looking for the person who's going to give me 100%. We'll work on the talent. We'll work on the gift. But give me somebody. He says, you give me somebody who's 100% in, and they'll leave blood on the field for you. And y'all hang on to your seats. <laughs> That's the same way with God. Y'all listen to this preacher. This may be my last service. We're going to go out to Bain. Same way with Jesus. God should never have to beg his children to come to church. Come on. God should never have to beg his children to come to church. God should never have to beg them to worship. God should never have to beg us to do anything. I always tell people, if Jesus Christ can die for me, the least I can do is live for him. If he can die for me, the least I can do is live for him. I made my mind up. I'm not chasing Christians. We, we got too many 50% soft cotton Christians. We got too many 50% polyester Christians. I'm not chasing Christians. I'm chasing the lost sheep. You should never have to have a phone call from a pastor to say, where have you been? <laughs> Lord, I knew it was going to get tight. But hey, I'll show you this. God says, if you show me a Christian, a man or a woman of God who is 100% sold out, they'll leave blood on the field for me. They'll leave blood on the field for me. So I'll leave you. Praise him. You guys come. I started thinking, people are looking at their watches again. I feel it. I ain't even looking at you. I see people looking right now. I'm, just, I'm telling you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You start living from the inside out. Inside out. Listen to me. Y'all got me? Say, I got you. You start living from the inside out, the tag will be exposed. Your talents and your gifts will start working through you. They'll start working through you. The second thing's going to happen, the owner of the tag will get the glory. If someone says, boy, you've done a good job, here's what your response needs to be. No, he done a good job through me. That's what you got to say. All fingers, everything, everything, everything goes back to Jesus Christ. You know why 137 people got saved last year? Jesus. You know why 92 people got baptized? Jesus. You know why we had a bunch of money come in? It's not because you're rich. God put his gifts and talents through you that you can make money to bless his kingdom. That's right. And I'm telling you, you'll be able to see the 100% if they're 100%. Watch this. Y'all ready? Here's my favorite thing. Time will tell. Time, you can get up here and speak in tongues all you want to, but if you act like hell in the parking lot, it's void to me. Void to me. You can get up here and lay hands on people all you want to and go home and drink all the alcohol you want to. Watch this. That's void to me. I'm talking about if you're full of the Holy Ghost, a 100% soldier, you're walking and you've got God on your side and He is in you and you are living from the inside out. I'm telling you, your gifts and your talents will be exposed. The giver of the gift and talents will get the glory and 100% authenticity will come through your life. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Y'all get the word? I'll leave you with this. Only one life will soon pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Listen to me, I'm going to say it again. This life, your life, will soon pass. It sure will. Listen, it's 100% guarantee. 100% guarantee. Your life, my life, is passing. But only what you do for Christ is going to last. That's right. Can I tell you, when you invest into the kingdom of God, 
you're investing into eternal things, not, not temporary things. This church here, oh, it's nice. But watch this, y'all read. I'm going to mess some of the people up because you worship the building. That seat you're sitting in is going to burn one day. We spent a lot of money. But guess what? Y'all ready? This building's temporary. But this building. This building. That the Holy Ghost is invested in. That has took stock in me. That now my tag is exposed. And my gifts and talents are coming forward. To God be the glory. And my prayer for Elkhorn Baptist Church from this point on. That God gets all the praise. That God gets all the honor. And that God gets all the glory. Stand to your feet in this house and give God a praise in here. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Come on. Come on, put your hands together for King Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone asked you. the first service you know how many of y'all ever had a shirt a tag just irritated you I started thinking I said man Haywood told me after the first service he said Brian something crazy he said dude he said I got a sweater and the tag was irritating me and I cut the tag out and it tore my short my shoulder uh, my sweater and I said oh coach he said I thought you might want to use that second service be careful not to tear the cut the gift and the talent careful. I see a bunch of tags out here right now. You know what bothers me about Elkhorn Baptist Church? I've been here coming on 10 years. And we have begged 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 and we have begged. I'm done. I'm not begging y'all no more. I'm done. I'm I'm done begging. I'm done begging Christians to work in the ministry. How silly is that? When we got the Holy Spirit. Y'all listen, right now, let me ask you something. What's God called y'all to do? Don't sit there and go, well, my granny told no. What has God told you to do? Jennifer, so to work in the kitchen, get in the kitchen. You are. Listen, we need van drivers. We got four vans that run about two to three routes apiece. They put about 150 kids here on Wednesday. And here's what we'll do. We'll clap about that, but nobody gets on the vans. So you know what I'm going to do this morning? I'm going to be a head coach. I'm going to pull my team in the locker room really quick. Y'all ready? Let's lean in real good. We need every one of y'all doing something. Everybody in here's got a gift, and you got a talent. We got van drivers. Jimmy's been driving a van now for what, six years? He said, you know, Brian, I would love to have a break. I'd love to come in and sit in Bible study. I'd love to have a break. But he can't because nobody's going to step up. Why? You know why? He just talked to me. Everybody wants to wear the shirt, but they cut the tag. Everybody wants to be a member. Everybody wants to celebrate. Everybody wants souls to be saved. Baptistry to stay filled. But here's the problem. You've got the shirt. You've got the bumper sticker. But your gift and your talent has been cut. Now I'm just asking y'all. Don't Listen, don't get mad at me. Because here's the deal. I'm going to stand before God one day and I'm going to back mine up with Scripture. When you stand before God, are you going to have any Scripture of what you're doing? We need van drivers. We're we're praying for 200 volunteers in our children's ministry. 200. Of a church of 600. My gosh. So here's it. I'm done. If God can't speak to you louder than I can, you're in trouble. What has God called you to do? I didn't ask, did you like the carpet? I didn't ask, did you like the big screens? I didn't ask, what song's your favorite? I didn't ask that. I'm asking you right now, what has God called you to do? And all the church mouth said. So I'm going to ask you, if you were to be living an inside-out life right now, 
What's your tag exposing? Is people seeing your gifts and your talents? Or have you cut the tag? Tom Bradley's 80, 85. Is that right, Tom? Four. He's heading toward 85. Forgive me. He's faithful. He don't stand through everything. He's 84. He probably deserves to sit down. Hallelujah. When I'm 84, I hope I'm even just doing what that man does. Yeah. I hope I'm still getting her done. But listen, he's faithful. Every time them doors is open, he's here. He's here. Miss Eula, Eula Durham this week had, had some health issues. Guess who's at church this morning? She's 85, I think. God help me. Man, what do we do in church? I'm asking you, what's your talent? What's your gift? Where's God called you? This morning, Ashley Sweeney, she was on the stage. She joined our church. She's down for a double lung transplant. A double lung transplant. She stood on this stage right here. We anointed her head with oil. We prayed healing over her life. And you know what she said? I want to get involved. Double lung transplant wants to get involved. What's y'all's excuse? Y'all can breathe, please. I don't want you to pass out on me. This is what a head coach does. And we're going to see what kind of team I have. <laughs> we're going to find out what Team Elkhorn looks like. Because here's the deal. People are lost and dying and going to hell. Does that bother you? Does that bother this side? Does that bother this side? Does that bother this side? Well, let's do something about it. That's right. Let's do something about it. So this invitation is this. Gifts and talents. Tag. Y'all ready? Tag. You're it. Well, I thought that's what we was paying a preacher for. You can have your money. I don't care. I'm just telling you, listen. The rapture could take place today. When God looks at your tag, what's he going to see? Oh, Brian, I've got a past. Yeah, tell that to Moses. He was a murderer. Well, Brian, I, I've lied. Tell that to Abraham. He was a liar. Brian, this is going to mess the Baptist church up. I have cheated. And here is my response. So did King David. But he asked for forgiveness. He got back up. He didn't stop. He exposed the tag. And he started working for Jesus Christ. That's what you got to do. So in Jesus' name, y'all ready? Hold your hands up. Come on. God, in Jesus' name, I've done what you called me to do. God, I'm praying from the right to the left, front to back, top to bottom. God, right now, in Jesus' name, speak. Speak. Who is supposed to be in the praise band? Who is supposed to be in leadership? Who is supposed to be a Sunday school teacher? Who is supposed to answer their call to preach? Who is a deacon? God, who are these people? So God, every hand that is raised, God, I pray right now they have a heart to heart with you. You expose them from the inside out. And I pray this prayer believing that all things is possible. In Jesus' name, amen. This altar is open. Come on. If God is dealing with you, man of God, woman of God, if He is dealing with you, Dan, I've heard you say it a bunch. You said, I'm over 70 years old, but God's not finished with me yet. He's not. Dan and Cupcake, is that right? He called you Cupcake. They'll leave here sometimes. You know where they'll go? They'll go to the nursing homes. He'll grab his guitar and play music to them. He'll give a devotion. I'm telling y'all, listen, you will stand before God one day and give an account. So in Jesus' name, what has God called you to do? Amen. Salter's open.